There are so many things to think about. So many, many things. Hello and welcome to Sea Life TV once again. I appreciate it. I'm Daryl Chesser and today we're going to be doing yet another reading of one of my writings entitled So Many Things. But before we get going, I once again want to tell you about sealifeministries.org and .com. It just, they both go to the same place right here. And um, it is uh, full of resources that are free to you. Uh, on the media page, there's a library or an archive of about 35 years of ministry in folders from 75 all the way up. I'm still filling them out, but right now there's about 700 sermons from different people. My dad, Harold L. Chesser, my mom, Dr. Jean, Alva Jean Chesser, my sister, Dr. Debbie Brewer, me, and so many, many other guests and also uh, many of our congregation at that time, ministers, uh, Elder Benson, Elder uh, Coggin, and uh, so many others. So it's worth, a, it's worth a spin over there to see. And then, of course, below that is the, is the video library, over 110 videos we have teaching on Sea Life TV. So we encourage you to go there. Okay, so let's continue on today with our reading and entitled, So Many Things. Naaman was a commander. In, the, uh, in one of the enemies of Israel in that day, who was mighty and he was highly honored in his country by his king and by the people. Naaman had leprosy, however, which was problematic. But he also had something in his house that he didn't realize. He had someone who actually had a little faith in God, in the God of Israel specifically. So I want us to start reading in 2 Kings chapter 5, let's uh, begin. Now Naaman, captain of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man before his master and held favor, because by him the Lord had given deliverance to Aram. He was also a mighty warrior, but he had leprosy. The Arameans had gone out raiding and had taken captive a little girl from the land of Israel, and she waited on the wife of Naaman. She said to her mistress, If only my Lord were before the prophet who is in Samaria, then he would take away this leprosy from him. Whoo! So many things going on here in these first few verses in 2 Kings. First, Naaman was a non-Jewish man from an enemy nation whom God had helped gain military victories, and some of those over Israel itself. Second, Naaman had raided a city in Israel and taken captives, one of them being a little girl from Israel. And third, this little girl, stolen from her land and made captive, was the one who wanted to help the guy that stole her get better. Because she actually believed that God could do it. How many of us would tell, well, basically someone who was just beating us up but was sick, tell them about, hey, my, my God can heal you. She was bold. She believed. So let's review what I just talked about. So many things going on here. But Naaman was given good news by a captive. And this captive's nation, Israel, with whom Naaman was an enemy, had a God that could heal him of an incurable disease. Wow. Hope springs eternal. But Naaman believed this good news. This is amazing. He believed that that little girl, hope, was ignited in him. So Naaman went to his king and told the story of this good news that the little girl had told him. Then his king, Naaman's king, wrote a letter to the king of Israel and said, he was coming, he was sending Naaman to Israel to be healed, and he was expecting results. Needless to say, when the king of Israel got this letter from this enemy king, who had been an adversary for some time, and it said, 
I'm believing that you can heal my servant. Yeah, he was, uh, he was, the enemy, <laughs> he thought the enemy was taunting him. In other words, looking for a reason to come to war. That the king ripped his robes and said, what the, I, how am I supposed to heal this guy? This guy is just picking a fight. So, Israel's king, obviously, in his reaction, is saying he, he doesn't really believe God can heal. He's, that's not the top of his mind. He thinks this is a, someone you know, causing him to go to war. However, Elijah, the prophet who replaced Elijah, hears about this king's distresses and his worries. Let's go back to Kings, 2 Kings chapter 5 and pick up. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent word to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Let him, who co let him come to me. Let Naaman come to me, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariot and stood at the entrance to the house of Elisha. Elisha sent a message to him, saying, Go and wash seven times. That's completely, perfectly, finally, that number seven, in the Jordan. Go wash seven times in this muddy river, and your flesh will be returned and cleansed. But Naaman became angry and went away and said to himself, Surely this guy could have come out and stood and called on the name of the Lord his God and waved his hand over the infected area and taken away the leprosy. Are not the Abana and far, far the rivers of Damascus far better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. Or he went away offended. He was expecting a show. He was expecting like many of you will mock and many of you, you know, people that come out and in the name of Jesus be healed. And, and it's show that you believe it. But what if that's what God told you to do? Naaman was expecting that. But Elisha didn't even come to the door. He just sent a word and said, go wash. Now, let's go back to the verses because this is pretty amazing. So, his servants approached him after that and said to him, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, wouldn't you have done it? How much more when he said to you, wash and be clean? So Naaman relented and he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, completely finished, perfect, is that word seven. According to the word of the man of God, and his flesh returned like the flesh of a little boy and he was clean. Wow, wow, amazing. Then he returned to the man of God, Elisha, he and all his company. He came and stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the land except in Israel. Now take a gift from your servant. <laughs> wow, so many things in that statement right there that we'll talk on, but this isn't the time. He refused the gift. For another time. So we'll stop right there. Now, this little girl taken captive believed God. She believed so much in what her God could do that she told her captor good news of this God. She, she told gospel good news about a God who could heal in Israel, a prophet who could get her healed. that he could save Naaman from this leprosy, from a lifetime, from a life sentence. Naaman believed, that's the key here. The good news was spoken, but Naaman, this Gentile who had no access to God, no promises, no covenant, he believed somebody had given him hope. And Naaman believed and received this good news that caused him to go and that if he went, he could be clean. And, and so he was washed completely clean in the Jordan. 
He was washed and he was saved and he was restored completely. Wow. My friends, do we believe the words of our Savior Jesus Christ enough to understand that if we are washed completely, once, forever, and finally in his blood by faith in the finished work of his broken body and spilled blood on the cross, that we too will be made completely whole, completely righteous, and completely justified before God. Do we believe that? That number seven in the Bible is what I call a creation number. Six days, the creation, seventh day he rested. It is the Sabbath. It is the end. It is like finished. It is finished. It is complete. It is perfect. It is perfection. So seven represents the seventh day, the day of God's rest and blessing after the finish, finishing the work. And it is the number of all this finality. It is finished. By dipping seven times, we see that the complete cleansing and washing from uncleanness, sin, and Naaman's life restored and made whole by faith in the good news about a prophet of God who could save. Wow. Yes, Jesus is a prophet, but Jesus Christ is way more than that. Jesus is the Son of God. He is the Messiah, and he is our Savior by faith in his work on behalf of us on the cross. Let's read. For being ignorant, I'm going to put on these glasses, I'm sorry. For being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness, they did not submit to the righteousness of God. This was Israel's rejection of Jesus of Nazareth as the Messiah. Christ is the end of the law unto righteousness for everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is based on the law. And he says, the man who does them shall live by them. But the righteousness which is based on faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the deep, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. This is the word of faith which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth Confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be ashamed. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is generous, generous toward all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's in Romans chapter 10. Whatever your mind is whispering to you today about your situation, about it being improbable, impossible, about how your third cousin, your third cousin Jenny Magnolia died with this condition, or maybe how you have committed too many sins, or maybe you are somehow special and the broken body and spilled blood of Jesus Christ can't help you with your sin and in your situation or your sickness or your addiction or your debt or lack in your depression or your despair will know for certain that there is a prophet in Israel, a man of God, one who is the son of God, the Messiah sent from God, and he died on that cross for us all. And he is risen from the grave and has saved and healed any and all who will believe and come to him by faith in God's great love and his grace. God is really good. He really is that good. And Jesus Christ is our Lord. He is our savior. He's our healer. He's our provider. And so many, many, many things. 
Amen. I want to say one more thing to you today before we go, that God is faithful. His grace and his mercy apply to you. His goodness applies to you. I don't care what your mind is telling you. I don't care what anybody's telling you. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that God sent him, that it was God's love that sent him to save the whole world. If you will believe this, that God has raised him from the dead and you will confess with your mouth, I believe Jesus Christ died for me. I believe that he has saved me from my sin. I believe that he has washed me clean. I believe that he has given me eternal life by faith in what he did on that cross, his body broken and bruised and battered and striped and pierced and just bloody at pulp, pushed on that cross and taken our curse and taking our sin and taking our sickness and taking our iniquities and taking it all for us, was judged righteously by God once for all time, for all men, for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord will be saved. If you believe that today, speak that. Go to the Father today and say, Father, I, I know I'm a sinner. I know I need a Savior, and I believe what I've heard today, this good news that there is a prophet who can heal me, who can provide for me, who can save me. And his name is Jesus Christ. But he's not just a prophet. He's the anointed one. He is the Son of God. He is our Lamb of God, the perfect sacrifice. And today, by confessing him as your Lord and believing in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you are saved. Praise God. Welcome to the kingdom. And now be filled, asking for the God's Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let the power of God come into you. And speak in tongues. I mean, pray out that prayer. Let it flow. The power of God come on you. Your life is going to be different. I love you guys. I appreciate you watching. And there are so, so many, many things to be grateful for. I'll see you next time.